Hello, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon in Asia Pacific region. Um, welcome to the webinar on uh, from Sheko Base and um, sponsored and supported by Danfoss on the topic of safety in industrial refrigeration in China. So I will share my screen to begin with the introduction. Just um, hang on with me for a minute. So first of all, um, well, as you know, this is uh, part of a series of webinars that we organize uh, from Sheko. Let me share my uh, full screen. Um, and it's under the brand of Sheko Base, which is the arm of Sheko uh, that deals with everything related to market intelligence, um, uh, research projects, and follow up of uh, everything that is relevant for the market of natural refrigerants. Uh, the plan for the day, well, before we move into the plan for the day, I would ask all of you who are attending to please check your uh, audio settings to make sure that you have the input level. Uh, you will see the options in Zoom so that you make sure you have uh, good quality of sound during the webinar. And you can do this as is indicated in the image. Uh, there is an option for audio settings. In there, in the general audio settings, you can test the input level of the um, of the speaker. You can test the speaker and make sure that you you're hearing clearly what the others are saying. Um, also, very important, we will proceed with a series of presentations. I will prepare, uh, present the program in a second, uh, and we will dedicate a moment for questions and answers at the end of the session. Uh, so, if you want to have a question, you can do this anytime during the webinar. We will see your question under the section of Q and A's, and you will see this on the menu on the top. Of your screen and you see Q&A. You can type in your question in there. Um, ideally indicate to which speaker this session, uh, question is addressed to and it will be taken at the end of the webinar. If a question is uh, specifically uh, too complicated it would take too long or we run out of time, uh, we will make sure to anyway um, reply to this question in written and it will be part of the report for the webinar afterwards. So in terms of the program, um, the um, first, I will start with a brief introduction on behalf of Sheko about the topic of trends that are relevant uh, from the perspective of policy and market for industrial refrigeration. Next, we'll have uh, Christian Strand, who's vice president for industrial refrigeration in Danfoss, to talk about to give an overview of industrial refrigeration um, uh, technology and trends, and more particularly in China, and then. Um, a colleague from China, Jackie Lun, he will, uh, senior marketing communication for Danfoss based in Beijing in China, will uh, comment specifically about uh, what are relevant trends for industrial refrigeration in China. And next we will proceed with a presentation by Yu Cheng Chen, who is the chief engineer assistant of Moon Environment Technology on how to reduce the ammonia charge, uh, followed by question and answers. Very brief introduction to the speakers. Uh, well, if you're wondering who I am, who is talking to you, I am the Chief Operating Officer of Sheko and Head of Media. I'm one of the original co-founders of Sheko as an independent entity more than 10 years ago. And uh, currently, uh, well, after a few years, I worked in the European Commission. I came back to Sheko in 2016. And um, also in this topic in particular, I chaired the recent Atmosphere China Conference that we held in April. And also we had a booth at China Refrigeration. So we had a good exposure to the topic of industrial refrigeration in China. Uh, Christian Strand is a head of industrial refrigeration in Danfoss, based in Denmark. He has more than 10 years of experience in the refrigeration industry and has previous experience in uh, different leadership roles, even at the CEO level uh, across different sectors. He has multicultural experience uh, in different positions from Europe and Asia and has a background in engineering and planning um, and, uh, as I mentioned, lives in, in Denmark. Um, next. Jackie Lun, he's a senior marketing communications manager in Danfoss with over 15 years of experience in uh, automation and refrigeration industries. He has a background in business and industrial engineering and, uh, and he lives in Beijing and in China. And uh, finally, Yu Cheng Chen, she's the chief engineer assistant for Moon Environmental Technology. Uh, she's uh, yes, in her capacity, she's the director of technical innovation uh, in Moon Tech and has also overseen responsibility for everything that is a uh, engineering uh, and technical development in the company and uh, eight years of experience in the development of compressors. Uh, she has a background in engineering, thermal physics and lived in Yantai in China. 
So, uh, moving on to the actual program, I will start with um, very briefly introducing what we believe are relevant market trends um, and starting with the policy um, landscape. And of course, one thing to, to start with is, uh, is very important is um, the pressure on or the um, evolution of the technology is very much determined by what happens at the legislative level. And in this context, we of course have the Paris Agreement to try to keep the global temperatures um, within a reasonable limit of two degrees Celsius and trying to curb the worst effects of climate change. Um, so this is having an impact in the refrigeration sector, of course, as we will see in a minute. More directly related also to our sector is the Kigali amendment to the Montreal Protocol, which is putting pressure on the phase out of HFs, uh, HFCs. This means that uh, HFCs will, be, will have to be phased down up to 85% uh, of the current use by 2040. Um, so this phase down schedule means there will be progress in different parts of the world and China will not be an exception. Um, in China in particular, um, of course, the country is still busy with a phase down of ozone depleting substances, of HCs, uh, HCFCs, uh, which is targeted by 2030. Um, so you see there the different reduction steps, uh, steps. This has been agreed for a long time as part of the Montreal Protocol. So the country is still in the, in the middle of this transition as we speak. Um, and of course, there are several initiatives that the Chinese government and the Chinese industry is taking uh, to phase out um, ozone depleting substances. Of course, from our perspective, what we see that is interesting is that there is an opportunity in China to um, jump directly from the use, uh, which is still quite prevalent, of ozone depleting refrigerants to natural refrigerants, avoiding the intermediary step of HFCs, which in any case will be phased out. Um, in this sense, the Ministry of Environment uh, of the uh, government of China has recommended a list of um, um, well, refrigerants that are suitable to different applications. And you can see here the, um, the list of recommended alternatives to HC, uh, HCFCs, to ozone depleting substances. And in particular, what, uh, what is um, touching industrial refrigeration, we can see that ammonia um, is recommended for installations such as cold storage, condensing units, industrial refrigeration systems. Uh, this together with uh, CO2 either in combination as cascade system or um, as ammonia uh, in direct expansion of different configurations is one of the, uh, of the solutions that uh, is definitely seen a, a strong development in, in China. Uh, in terms of market trends, what we see that is uh, important uh, on a global level is that what well, the market of industrial refrigeration has been traditionally dominated by ammonia in, in large quantities and also H HFCs and HDFCs. Now we see uh, a bigger and broader range of options and natural refrigerants are the main options that are um, competing in this segment. So we see a, an interesting trend to, towards a low charge ammonia, so reducing the amount of refrigerant that can be used. Uh, we also see the introduction uh, of CO2 transcritical systems for industrial refrigeration. And also very interesting, a combination of ammonia and CO2, and CO2 for the uh, low temperature, ammonia for the medium temperature um, for industrial installations. What is driving this is, well, the focus on safety, um, the focus on increasing the efficiency and therefore reducing the, um, um, well, the energy bill that is quite significant for industrial installations. And this also for the end user perspective is, uh, is very interesting from the business perspective to, to have a return on investment uh, of, of um, the cost of new installations. All this means there is a growing competition in this segment, um, which we believe is positive because this should lead to higher efficiency in general and also um, more competitive prices for different options and giving more options to end users, um, which would result in um, well, natural refrigerants being um, the absolute uh, preference for all installations with industrial refrigerations. In terms of ammonia with a lower charge, we uh, at Sheco, we are doing um, currently a research into this topic and what we found out is that there is already uh, um, quite a few blocks of countries which are very, and, and regions in the world which are very much advanced in this technology. In the UK alone, there are nearly 500 uh, installations with low charge. Uh, in Japan, this is an absolute champion with 500 installations of this kind. And in China, we see already over 150. And this includes also, by this low charge definition, we also include the configuration of uh, CO2 ammonia uh, cascade systems. 
in China, in uh, industrial refrigeration, just to give the, uh, the background, um, well, it's been used in China for 60 years, the uh, ammonia in industrial processing, cold storage and sports facilities, etc. We see today more than 30,000 end users uh, with uh, ammonia installations today and um, an increased focus on safety and energy efficiency. And as I mentioned before, the configuration of um, ammonia and CO2 cascade systems is gaining popularity and we see a growing number of these kind of installations across the country. Of course, uh, existing um, together with the uh, traditional ammonia systems of large capacities. This is all from my side. Um, you can, as I mentioned before, join the discussion via the Q&A. And something um, important I want to mention, because it's very relevant and linked to this, uh, this discussion today, is that we are, as I mentioned, compiling a guide to low charge ammonia, where we will offer insights in terms of market analysis, technology trends, uh, case studies, um, updates relevant for codes and standards, and different applications of ammonia. We are doing a survey which we had already 300 replies so far, uh, but we still have the option to receive a few more replies until 16th of May. So you will still have the option to participate by clicking on the, uh, on the link indicated in the presentation. And then you will, of course, have access to the presentations um, after the webinar. So with this, uh, I will give the floor uh, to Christian Strand, who will talk about uh, well, an introduction to, from the point of view of Danfoss, of relevant trends for industrial refrigeration. Uh, Christian, the floor is yours. Please welcome. Thank you, Alvaro. Uh, I'll just share my screen here. So, thank you for the uh, introduction. I'm happy to be here. This is my uh, my debut in the the Sheku web webinar, so I'm very pleased to be with all of you and uh, and hope we have some good discussions on this uh, on this uh, very interesting topic. Okay, you say there's some issue on the mic. Can you hear me clearly or? Uh, yeah, I can, I can hear you fine. I think the, the sound is working well. Okay, thank you. So just to, to link on to what uh, Avaro just said that, uh, yeah, we, we have these mega trends that is driving, driving us rapidly forward, both in terms of growth in our uh, industry and also the transition towards an increased usage of uh, natural refrigerants. Uh, we see a uh, year-on-year growth in the industrial refrigeration market on around six, uh, 5 to, uh, to 6% uh, on a global level. If we look at, at cooling globally, we are responsible for 10% of the global CO2 emissions. And, and if we think a little bit about these, these macro trends, we will in 2050 reach 9.8 billion people on the planet. So the demand for cooling and refrigeration is increasing very rapidly. So we need to meet this demand. So we need to, there are more people who want to be cooled down, so to say, and there is a lot more food that needs to be produced. And we need to meet this demand with energy efficient solution and of course using natural refrigerants but to do this and meet this huge demand we need to think a little bit outside of the box and we need to do what we say is more with less as was already mentioned by uh, avaro the uh, if we look on the uh, the market uh, for uh, uh, industrial refrigeration there has happened a lot over the last uh, two to three years. I don't know, can you, I have a problem shifting the screen. There we go, thank you. Um, so there's a tremendous change. So what used to be a, a, a industry with technologies primarily around uh, ammonia uh, as a, the main refrigerant has dramatically changed. And today we see a huge variety of, of systems and solutions. We also see, as mentioned, new players coming in and we see the boundaries between what we used to define as, as commercial refrigeration on the one side and industrial on the other side is getting is getting moved and getting more blurry or more undefined. Uh, we often discuss what is the definition on industrial refrigeration and at Danfoss we define it as system being designed and built 
using, you could say, iron, steel, and stainless steel industrial components and controls. So mainly on the, you could say, on the capacities and the way you construct the system, and not uh, any more uh, depending on the on the refrigerant. Once you uh, you are looking at these solutions, then I think it's very important to look at this triangle and say that that the key here is sustainability. On top of that, we have safety, and and I think we can all agree that that safety must never be compromised. And I think it's also fair to say that all low GVP refrigerants are safe if they are handled and used correctly, and we are following the standards and guidelines that we have within within the market and in our industry. Then energy efficiency is a key parameter. Uh, remember the, the sentence that we have to do more with less. So we have to minimize the energy consumption and reduce the running cost. Uh, and by that, we can have a, a huge impact over the lifetime of industrial refrigeration system. Then affordability. Uh, price competition is there, is, is more and more fierce, and, and we all need to stay competitive in the marketplace. And here it's also important to consider uh, the affordability over the whole lifetime of the system. So not only the initial CapEx investment, but also cost for service maintenance and the total lifetime of the system. So this is the way we, we think about it when, when we look into the different systems. In China, we have experienced over the past years uh, challenging, and I know that, that my colleague uh, Jackie is gonna go more into detail on this, but the classical ammonia system has been challenged uh, in the past years. And one reason has been some, some tragic accidents that has been involving, but not necessarily caused by ammonia installations. And therefore local authorities has, in, in some regions in China has been very reluctant or, or rejecting to give permits to ammonia installations. This has led to a situation where uh, we see new solutions coming in, but we unfortunately also see new systems being built using uh, the old refrigerants using uh, R22. Uh, and this is, if you look at this chart, very unfortunate because we do have many options, as was also mentioned by Avaro, to, to reduce the ammonia in different ways. Uh, and you see it here on the chart that traditionally in, in China, the system has been built using a ceiling or bunker coils, leading to a, a very large charge of uh, ammonia refrigerant. And if you look then uh, on the other examples, you can see that system designs in, in parts of Europe has significantly low, but then going to to ammonia DX system, uh, combination of ammonia CO2, or even go to, to super low charge ammonia system, we have the possibility here to really, really reduce the charge a lot. Uh, and if we do that, and, and also then uh, introduce automatic control solutions, then we do not only increase the efficiency of the system, but also safety, the safety component we are able to, to really bring in here. Uh, as we have much less ammonia to deal with, and we are able to, to have solutions where we conceal the ammonia to smaller parts of the system, and by that increasing the safety levels a lot. So to, to summarize, uh, I would say that to meet the increasing demand for cooling and refrigeration, we need to do more with less. And we do have the know-how, and we do have the solutions, and, and we see that every day with, with the, the things that is coming up in the market. So the same applies when it comes to, uh, to training service and support. And this is probably one of the, the biggest challenges that we are facing is to have enough uh, people in the community that is, is trained and have knowledge about and are able to service all these new systems and solutions. But I'm sure that, that with the support also from the Chinese uh, uh, authorities and the supporting regulatory framework, then we will jointly be able to provide safe and energy efficient solution based on natural refrigerants also to the Chinese market in the future. Thank you very much for, for listening in. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Christian, for a very good overview. I had maybe just one question anticipating the questions that we hear very often uh, when we talk about low charge ammonia. Uh, and from Danfoss perspective, you presented different options and different configurations. And one of them was uh, ultra low, I believe you, you use this term. Do you have, what benchmark do you use to define low charge, very low, ultra low? Yeah, it, it, it's, a very, it's a very good question. And I, I can't really answer that because there is a lot of definitions out in the market. So I think maybe it's more fair to actually name it charge reduction and, and, and then look okay. at that and say, because if, if you look, depend, it depends all where, where, what is your starting point? If your starting point is a, it's a let's say, older 30 year old system with bunker coils, yeah then everything would be low <laughs> and, and yeah. then to, to talk about 
are low and ultra low. And then I think it depends also on the application, because what are we talking? Are we talking an industrial system uh, where we, we need to provide large capacity, or are we talking about uh, uh, ammonia chiller or, uh, or ammonia uh, smaller systems? Uh, then then it has much more uh, impact if we lower the, uh, the amount of refrigerant. So yeah, a, a good question. I can't really say. There's a lot of figures flying around there. You know that also. So we'll yeah, yeah, that's one of the challenges we have precisely for the guide. Yeah, so, and I, yeah. I don't know if we in the industry could maybe uh, try to agree on some terms and, and, and some levels on that. But we, we would rather say charge reduction. That's so perhaps the, for now, indeed, the safer term is charge reduction or lower uh, yeah, charge yeah, ammonia. Yeah, lower that's lower more lower accurate lower. than simply a low charge. And as you can see on the on the the figure, there's a that's a lot of room that we can go in and uh, and take mm -hmm. out. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. Uh, we'll give the floor now to uh, Jackie uh, Lun, connecting from Beijing, who will zoom in to the situation specifically in China. Jackie, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, thank you, thank you, Avril, thank you, Christian, and uh, uh, it's my honor to be here and uh, give some introduction about the China and after. Uh, Christian introduced about uh, the general perspective of the ammonia refrigeration around the world and China. So I'd like to uh, share some uh, information uh, in detail about China, uh, what's the background uh, info, uh, background situation, and what's from uh, and some update information, especially from the regulation standard uh, point of view. And uh, our partner uh, Yantai Moons, Ju uh, Cheng Cheng, uh, later we'll catch up with more detailed solutions uh, that we work together. I will share my screen. Okay, so in the very beginning, it's just, just some general introduction about ammonia as one uh, uh, refrigerant. And uh, as, as one coin has two slides that we know there are many advantages uh, for ammonia, such as uh, it's environmental uh, friendly, it's a very high efficiency uh, comparing to the fair run system for the big scale of the uh, refrigeration project. And it has the self-alarm function, and it's a main refrigerant in the industrial refrigeration uh, in uh, around the world. Yeah, but also it uh, have some disadvantage, uh, disadvantage such as uh, toxic, uh, flammable, and also it's a uh, uh, combustion needs extremely high uh, ignition energy. And uh, and here we show the form in some detailed figures. It's about uh, uh, we calculate the information. It's about the uh, the, the the figures of the deaths. Of people caused by the ammonia refrigeration, some related acci uh, accident uh, in some countries, such as you can see uh, in in Denmark, it's uh, till the uh, end of uh, year 2008, uh, over 63 years, there is uh, no uh, death report. And generally, in the past 22 years, uh, there are only two death uh, report. Uh, so we can see from this uh, overall picture that we know that uh, ammonia uh, is safe, could be safe. Yeah. And uh, and uh, the ammonia uh, situation as the refrigerant uh, in industry refrigeration in China. Uh, so by the end of the year 2017, uh, there were about uh, 30,000 ammonia refrigeration plants in China. And uh, it's mainly for the uh, cold storage, logistic, and also for the processing, food processing. And uh, there are around, uh, it's more than 15% of them are big plants. And 7% of them is, have more than 10 tons of charge. So it's uh, really have the, this kind of the uh, safety issue that we need to really uh, uh, take care and focus on. And here I'd like to share some background uh, information. Some is really the tragedy, what happened in several years before. And this is uh, also the background why uh, uh, today's topic is uh, so important in China, such as in 2013, that in Jilin Baoyuanfeng, a poultry accident uh, caused uh, more than 120 people died and 70 more than 70 hurt. And also uh, in the same year in Shanghai, Wenpai, as an accident, it uh, caused uh, 15 people died and the seven serious injury and the 18 hurt. So, so it's uh, all have somehow the linkage with the ammonia refrigeration, and. Uh, uh, we know the root cause here I mentioned uh, both for the Baoyuanfeng case and for the Wenpai case. 
uh, they are not 100% directly linked to the refrigeration, uh, uh, linked to the ammonia refrigeration, but somehow it caused a very big uh, controversy in China. It's about the safety for the ammonia. A lot of the uh, stakeholders, they have thoughts inside, especially for some government agencies. Uh, they think that uh, uh, ammonia is uh, quite dangerous. And uh, uh, based on that background in, in China, especially for the industry refrigeration related industry, it's, uh, it's uh, were threatened by the come back to fair around this kind of situation. So here have some clips uh, from the newspaper. We can see that we call the war between the ammonia and the fair around system. And uh, also we can see a lot of the industry uh, media, they, they, they show a lot of the message about how to realize the transition from the dangerous uh, ammonia back to the safety fair run, this kind of the reports. It's really not uh, the right trend in China. And, uh, and based on that uh, background information that uh, Danfoss together with CAR, the leading Association in China, Chinese Association of Refrigeration, uh, we together and uh, and also uh, we we come to the to the government uh, related bureau such as the World Safety Bureau to have somehow the, this kind of the cooperation, and uh, we target at one district. Sorry that today I cannot uh, it's not public uh, yet, so I cannot tell the name of the district. But we do very detailed investigation about the real situation in China for the. Uh, ammonia refrigeration uh, situation. And uh, uh, we uh, gathered one uh, VIP delegation with all by the experts in this uh, industry. And we, based on the more than 20 uh, uh, ammonia refrigeration projects in that district, and we also based on the AQNT, the safety uh, specification for ammonia enterprise 2015, in that version, and the four hour this kind of the joint investiga investigation. We want to know the, uh, the, the clear picture about the current situation in China for the ammonia refrigerant or ammonia uh, as the refrigerant in the industrial refrigeration, and to know that uh, uh, what, what kind of the dangerous or safety level of it and how to deal with it. So here you can see that based on that uh, specification, we work out uh, one form and uh, how to uh, give the detailed score for the, each of the project. That means we can category different projects uh, in different, uh, somehow the, we call the safety level. And uh, also we set in about different uh, importance for each of the uh, items because the, uh, the specification that we used is uh, they have a total of 41 uh, terms and we pick up 35 terms as the big influence related to the safety and the class, uh, class B is a normal influence, it's a six terms. And also including in the class A, there are five terms. Uh, we give the definition to them, it's a vital item. That means uh, it's a very, very dangerous item. If something not follow that item will be very dangerous, have the safety issue. So this is the form that uh, uh, what we made to, to check for each of the projects in detail, how we do that in detail specification, how to give the scores. Uh, so I just uh, snapshot one page uh, for your reference. And here is about our effort is uh, to join this uh, delegation or the supervisors for the safety of that uh, target district. And here is about the results. We just pick up one uh, 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 district nearby Beijing and the inside is have over 20, in total is 21 projects used uh, ammonia as the refrigerant for the big scale of the project and uh, as the refrigerant. And we can see that uh, uh, it's, uh, the, the, the score, the final score distribution that uh, is uh, over uh, 80 score half nine percent, uh, half nine uh, projects is uh, roughly 20, uh, uh, sorry, roughly half of the projects uh, what we investigated. And also the uh, half of the projects is also with uh, relatively low scores. That means a lot of the uh, safety is uh, issues. So here is some uh, uh, very typical problems that we found. Actually, this report uh, uh, we uh, uh, we collect, we finished after that uh, round of the investigation. It's more than 50 pages. And here I just show some reference. You can see here a lot of the typical problems uh, for, for, for this time 
uh, the involving enterprise, uh, we only have 21, but a lot of the typical one has the over 10 uh, is, uh, or over 15 have the same uh, similar uh, problems or, or the typical problems uh, that, uh, that we should focus on. And also that uh, we can see uh, sometimes uh, some projects really have the, uh, some, some issues is uh, break the vital items, such as the, uh, the fair uh, separation distance between the ammonia refrigeration room to the civil buildings, et cetera. And also we have a different kind of the other problems is uh, uh, not exactly follow the specifications uh, and regulations. A lot, yeah. And also, we can see that uh, because the government pay high attention on the, uh, the ammonia refrigeration project, so 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 normally uh, the the government will assign some expert, so called expert, to go to the each of the project to have this kind of investigation before our our investigation. And uh, we can see even uh, in some projects they have this kind of the hyper corrections. That means. Uh, uh, the, the ammonia refrigeration doesn't need this kind of the protections, but is uh, we call the hyper corrections. It's also we can find some uh, in this time our investigation. So after that one, uh, we have this uh, clear picture that one side is uh, in China we do have this kind of the issues, especially for the existing ammonia uh, refrigeration project. A lot of the old projects, even over twenty years, we really need to have. Uh, very strict control of them. On the other side, we can also see a lot of the new projects and the big projects. They are already have a very good, uh, uh, a very good uh, conditions about the, the safety. So it's, uh, it's uh, maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, we, we need to have a different uh, uh, type of the control for this kind of the uh, company. So uh, this is the recommendation we give to the government and also the industrial association. We take the reference on the Beijing restaurant, uh, the, 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 for the for the for the cleanliness of the restaurant. Uh, Beijing government they have this kind of the quantitative uh, classification management, and uh, now in Beijing all the restaurant you can clearly see this kind of the marks with different kind of the star shows on the different level of the cleanliness, and uh, and uh, uh, so the end user such as us if we go to uh, to this kind of the restaurant, then uh, we can based on this mark to decide whether we should uh, go inside or not. So have somehow the influence to the uh, to the to the stakeholders of the industry. So we give this suggestion to the uh, the government bureau of the safety uh, management and also give to the CAR. Uh, so we suggest to have this kind of the quantitative uh, safety classification system in the China ammonia refrigeration. So we take that district as one uh, example. We can see by each of the, uh, the, 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 the green light, uh, blue light, yellow light, and red light is different kind of the category. And then we have a different uh, way of how to deal with that uh, by different category. Uh, so if we take that uh, area, it's a 21 project on the map, and we can very clear to see that on this map. Uh, map uh, where is uh, is in the, uh, the 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 safe end and where is uh, need to take uh, uh, key actions. So it's also linked to the uh, government uh, targeted for the supply side reform. Uh, so it's uh, use this way we can support the advanced uh, capacity and also close down the outdated uh, production for the facilities. So this is our recommendation to the government and the industry also uh, organizations. And uh, so here is the latest progress. We are so happy to see that is uh, uh, the government already authorized the CAR uh, to update uh, the, the existing specifications for the safety of the ammonia enterprises. And uh, very soon it will have the 2018 version, the new version, and uh, uh, many updates include uh, related a lot of the automatic control to ensure the safety of the ammonia plants. On the other side, it's a CAR as the, the leading organization in China is also working on its first industry of, uh, of association standard for the ammonia system safety evaluation, uh, which they take the dancers our suggestion insight, and also we will join their uh, their group uh, to 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 in very detail to prepare this standard. So we really hope that from the regulation or standard 
a point of view, we can do something uh, to support uh, or to 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 guide the industry into the right direction. Yeah, that's all my inputs today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie, for a very complete overview of the situation in China. Um, I would remind the audience that it's possible to send your questions through the chat via the Q&A session, uh, Q&A section of the menu in Zoom, and uh, we'll be able to reply to them at the end of the last presentation. Maybe just one comment. I uh, noticed the recommendation that you made to have a labeling system with colors to determine the level of safety. Um, I think that's, that sounds a very interesting uh, system, a very simple system that people can understand and follow. Do you know, or what is your expectation in terms of uh, when do you think there will be a position or a, a reaction by the Chinese government, uh, whether they accept this recommendation and uh, the timing in which this could be implemented? Yes, it's, uh, we really have a lot of the discussion about this topic. And uh, now in China, it's also we get some very good comments from the government, such as they mentioned it's a safety, it's a no big and small. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we, we use this kind of the category system, it's not like cleanliness of the restaurant, it's a safety issue always is the biggest one. And uh, we fully understand that. But we hope that uh, one side is uh, uh, not only the government, uh, one side we hope the government, they have very a detailed and very specific uh, regulation standard uh, to track and follow and we have the enough people they are they are fully trained and experienced can uh, to to investigate all the existing projects in china this is one quite important issue on the other side we hope that the industrial organization they can also show their power and if we somehow we can have this kind of the mechanism for the category and all the uh, stakeholder or end user for the uh, ammonia pl related plant such as the, uh, the, the end user of the logistic uh, warehouse or end user for the food processing and they can based on the marks or the, the green or uh, red uh, lights to make decision whether, whether they should choose this brand or this company to, 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 to cooperate. It will be a very, very good mechanism to guide this industry uh, to the to the right uh, right direction. So this is what we hope, and uh, I think now it's on the right way. We will try our best to support it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Jackie. Um, okay. Now I'll give the floor to Yu Cheng Chen from um, Moon Environmental Technologies, who's going to talk about the reduction in charge of ammonia installations and how to uh, effectively reduce the charge of uh, ammonia. Um, the floor is yours, Yu. Please welcome. Hello, everyone. Dear Honorable everyone, I'm Ju Chengcheng, and I'm very honored to discuss the safety technology of ammonia. I share some work with you today about how to reduce ammonia charge. In recent years, Ocean layer destruction and global warming are seriously threat to the living environment of human beings. The scientific research shows that it has a great relationship with the HCFC and HFC refrigerants. Various environmental problems have accelerated to the elimination of non-environmental refrigerants. In the future, the available refrigerants are mainly including in the natural refrigerants, in the nat natural refrigerants such as hydrocarbons, ammonia, and CO2. Hydrocarbon refrigerants, including our common propane, ethylene, propylene, and other refrigerants. With the example for propane, it's ODP equals zero, GWP equals three, which has very high unit volume for refrigeration capacity, but it also has a very strong explosive properties. CO2 has very good characteristics on safety and economy, but the efficiency of single cycle refrigeration is rather low. It's suitable for low temperature refrigeration and high temperature heating. Ammonia has a very bad application in China in the earlier period, and you know, the proportion of ammonia cold storage in China is more than 80%. The economy and the system efficiency of ammonia are all high. 
And the only disadvantage is that it has certain toxicity and explosive properties. We need to take into account system efficiency and safety, but sometimes they are contradictory, like ammonia system. And there is another fact that we must not overlook that is the bad application of coils. The advantage of the coil are low wind speed, uniform temperature, dry consumption of frozen goods, and the fluctuation of temperature are small. For a long time in the future, the evaporator will not be completely replaced by the cooling fan. The ammonia charging capacity of the coil is very large sometimes even accounting for about 80% of the ammonia con content of the whole system. Our solution is to use ammonia CO2 cascade or secondary refrigeration system. The CO2 is used as a terminal working medium with large amount of coolant, good heat transfer performance, and fluidity. And this is the technical route for the replacement of the minus 55 to 5 degrees centigrade refrigeration system and the evaporator temperature of minus 25 degrees centigrade. The cascade refrigeration system is considered as a priority and the secondary refrigeration system is considered as a temperature range of minus 15 to minus 25. When the evaporator temperature is high, it's suitable to use CO2 high temperature secondary refrigeration. But how to overcome the high pressure and how to improve the performance are the problem we are studying. The Moontag is the first manufacturer to develop the ammonia CO2 cascade refrigeration system in China. It has experienced 10 years from two uh, 2008 to 2018, AST, the fourth generation of ammonia CO2 cascade refrigeration products, which have been widely popularized and approved by customers at last year's refrigeration exhibition. The design concept of third generation is to restrict the ammonia into small tons. And in order to ensure the long-term stable operation of the system, and uh, eliminate the fluctuations of environmental temperature and the impact of the system leakage. The system we first designed would increase the huge ancillary equipment. But in fact, our refrigeration system is a given operating condition only needs four large parts, compressor, condenser, throttle valves, and evaporator. The first thinking is to cancel the liquid storage device. It has no function in our system. After the cancellation, the operating range of the system will be reduced and the seal requirement of the system shall be improved. The liquid supply moves affect the efficiency of the heat exchanger. The efficiency of the pump supply heat exchanger is greater than that of the gravity and also greater than the direct expansion. The gravity supply liquid is about 2.5 times of the direct expansion on system charge, and the pump supply liquid is about three times of the direct expansion. We need to ensure the higher system operations efficiency and the smaller ammonia charge. At this time, a unique microgravity blood supply technology can be adapted which is exclusive transfer technology from Afalaba to the moon tech. This technology uses three effective separation methods, impact, gravity, and the centrifuge. Microgravity supply liquid reduces the circulation ratio of the system, reduces the ammonia charge and the volume of the gas liquid separator, and improves the operating efficiency of the system at the same time. The evaporator of cascade system is also called the condenser evaporator. The adaption of high efficiency heat exchanger can reduce heat transfer temperature difference and improve the performance of the system. At the same time, the most important is to reduce the amount of ammonia in the condenser evaporator. 
So we use efficient plate or shell heat exchangers for condensing evaporators. We consider the condenser is different from the condenser evaporator. The working medium of the condenser is water, but in the current water quality condition in China, if we use the plate or shell heat exchangers, the condenser will be cleaned frequently. If, if the close the cooling tower is added, the condensing temperature will be raised and the system efficiency will be reduced. So we also need to optimize the condenser based on the traditional shell and the tube water cooling and evaporative cooling. For the traditional shell and tube water cooled condenser, we tried different forms of condensing high efficiency tubes and through the integrated technology of the conten container. The similar containers with a similar structure and function such as oil separator and oil cooler were combined. For the traditional evaporative cooling, we increase the specific surface area of the heat transfer by reducing the diameter of the tube. By optimizing the structure of the tube to enhance the heat transfer coefficient outside the tube, by optimizing the distribution of the refrigerant, refrigerants, they can reduce the drop height, drop height and increase the heat transfer coefficient in the tube. For oil cooler, customers are advised to use efficient water cooling to reduce ammonia and adapt new efficient plate and shell or plate oil coolers. For oil pumps, semi-chromatic oil pumps are needed to reduce leakage. For the compressor, there is a certain leakage for open screw compressors. At this point, we can either use expensive mechanical seal with complex, complex auxiliary system or semi chromatic screw compressors to reduce leakage. Our plan is to adapt semi chromatic ammonia screw compressor. After the optimization of the select path in the system, we can also take some measures to reduce the charge amount of the system layout, such as reducing the tube specifications on the basis of accurate calculation of the flow velocity, compact arrange the equipment, and reducing the length of the tube and reducing the non-function valves and flanges to enhance the ceiling of the whole machine. AIST is a commercial refrigeration product with a similar refrigerator. It can be placed directly in the outdoor or on the roof. The user installation cycle is very short and is also very convenient with the plug and play. We believe that the home electrification of a com commercial refrigeration products is a trend in the future. And the most importantly is that the ammonia charge of this product is very low. And this is what we have done in the field of safety use ammonia in recent years. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, you, for the very complete overview with uh, plenty of good um, insights. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much for your complete overview in terms of how to reduce the charge of ammonia with plenty of good advice and actions that you're taking to do that. Um, I was personally very impressed with uh, the picture. I think sometimes we say one image is uh, more telling than 100 words. And when we see the size of the equipment, um, of the new equipment with a lower charge, is very telling. Immediately you can, you can tell. Uh, we have received a couple of questions and uh, I would like to go to, to reply. One, it's probably for you, uh, you and also for, for Danfoss. And is do your customers actively ask for low charge ammonia installations or is it something that you offer to them proactively? Uh, Abra, let, let me give a very brief uh, translation to, to Chang Chang and then uh, okay. she can Thank you, answer Jackie. and I will translate. 呃, 
呃这些客户在问就是低空住的这个低的安，能听到吗？程程，肖伦，哎，能听到吗？肖伦。哎，能听到吗 ？Hello， 啊，能听到。好的，呃，第一个问题啊，嗯、有人提问，就是说，呃，当遇到这种低呃安充注量的产品或系统的时候，呃，客户呢是主动的是去询问呃这些采购的需求，还是呃现在燕太冰轮集团会在主动的在在在呃在给他们这些需求？我们是在主动的在推进。OK。啊，因为这个也是第三第三代了。嗯嗯。Okay. Uh, for the first question, is uh, Ju Chengcheng from Yantai Moon Group. She replied that now mainly is still actively uh actively uh is uh, by by Moon Group to offer to the stakeholders about this kind of low charge uh product or system. It's more actively uh by 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 us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, there was another question. I guess this is more for uh, for Danfoss. In in your view, which are the factors which would influence positively a decision to go for a, a low charge ammonia system on a future project? Is it the the capital cost compared to um, other options? Is it the total life cycle cost of the equipment? Uh, faster time? Um, is it safety? What, what do you see as the main driver from? Uh, when you're proposing this this solution and to opt for that okay uh i will answer first and uh all before i may answer i also i'd like to translate to chen chen very quick okay okay and uh chen chen the second question is now the these users who are choosing this low charge ammonia system when they are choosing this low charge ammonia system when they are choosing this low charge ammonia system when they are choosing this low charge ammonia system when they are choosing this low charge ammonia system when they are choosing this low charge 第一点是不是它的初始投资会比较低？第二点呢是它的综合成本会比较低，就选择这种重低充足量的。第三个呢是它快速安装以及快速的这种呃调试系统。呃，从这三个角度，你们你们是怎么看待的？就是我们的低充足量系统，呃的优势核心在哪个点上？啊，在第三个点上，快速安装，而而且他没有提的一个点，应该说是安全。刚才也说了，就是我们这个 AIST。它可以直接放在屋顶上，因为安是比较轻的。嗯哼，在屋顶上有泄漏的话，它直接飘散到上空，对下边是没有影响的。好的 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，I just translated the answer from Chen Chen and uh, uh, she vote for the number three is a faster installation、uh, time and uh, uh, comparing to competing the the system and uh, especially another point uh, she want to address that、uh, is also for the safety. Issue. This is also my my answer. That is、uh, now people to make decision to choose the, the low charge of the ammonia system mainly because of this safety issue, and、uh, and in China is that、uh, the government、uh, somehow they have this kind of limited the project、uh, use ammonia, and、uh, if the charge of the ammonia could be very、uh, small, then it's more easy to get approval by the government. So the main concerns from the end user they choose the low charge. Of the system is uh, uh, of, uh, also from the safety end, yeah. Okay, thank you.、Um, there was another question, more comment on the definition of low charge ammonia, and this is something、uh, on a reference which、uh, one of the leading professors in this field is Professor Pega Horniak from the、mm -hmm. University of Illinois. He mentioned in the、uh, in a conference last year, which I attended, we wrote an article about this that the Um, he would define low charge ammonia in three categories: so ultra low charge with a charge up to 2.5 kilograms of the refrigerant, very low charge up to 50 kilograms, and low charge up to 100 kilograms of the refrigerant.、Um, he gave also an alternative definition based on the amount of refrigerant needed for the amount of、um, output of a kilowatt capacity,、um, mm -hmm. and then keeping this with a with a certain、um, Range、uh, and、uh, under which you could consider this、uh, a low charge installation, but if you take、mm -hmm. this, let's say for the small range of industrial installations, is it something、uh, that you could agree with with Professor Horniak to have this、uh, this distinction? Okay, let me translate. Uh, Chang Chang, the next question is there is a expert who mentioned that there was a professor named Horniak. He mentioned a few terms in a conference. 
呃，关于这个充足量、低充足量的一些定义，它的定义是呢，有这种超低充足量是这个 2.5 公斤以下，然后呢，有个低充足量，呃，五十公斤以下，以及这个，呃，这个这个这个这个低低充量，呃，一百公斤，呃，以下。他分了三个档啊，他想问问从丁伦的角度，你们你们是不是认可这种定义的方式？呃，这个专家定义的这个方式的话。应该说和应应用场合有关的，像这个小的这个 2.5 公斤的，可能对于家用或者，而对呃而对于那个50公斤的这个，可能是对于商超之类的。对于100公斤的话，是对我们这个冷冻冷藏来说的。然后冷冻冷藏，我们前一阵有一个9237那个标准，今年7月1号就要实施。然后它的充足量是定义在，如果你控制在200公斤以下的话，就可以控制在呃就是。安系统和主要建筑物的距离就可以控制在三十米，原来是从五十米减到三十米。嗯哼。OK， it's a yeah。还有一点。呀，你继续说，没事。还有和用户。嗯。还有就是和用户的这个产量有关。嗯。像对于我们这种五千吨的，一百公斤可以做到；然后对于一万吨或者十万吨大规模生产的这种。嗯，它的充量是不可以做到。我觉得它这种划分的话，最好是和我们这个冷量关联起来，嗯、就是零点三公斤每千瓦，或者是零点五公斤每千瓦，这样来定义一个，嗯，低充量、超低充量更合理一些。嗯哼、嗯，好的，谢谢。呃、uh, ，Let me translate that. Uh, uh Chen Chen think that. Uh, Uh, probably this uh, uh, definition is linked to different applications, such as the first one uh, is a uh, usual low uh, charge is uh, maybe linked to the the the, the residential uh, uh, application, and mm -hmm. the second one very low charge maybe is commercial, and the third one low charge is uh, in, uh, industrial, and now uh, based on the new uh, regulation or new standard is uh, in China is GB. Uh, 9237 uh, is uh, what which will be formally announced in the released in the first of uh, July, and inside it called that uh, uh, so if the the charge of the ammonia for the plant is uh, lower than 200 kilo, that means that the the safety distance could be uh, shortened from uh, 50 meter to 30 meter. This is very very crucial, uh, especially for the project in the downtown. So it's a uh, uh, this is uh, one of the, her comment. Another one uh, she she like to comment that uh, probably that uh, maybe we can use another way to calculate such as uh, how many kilo uh, uh, of the charge for the how many kilowatt this kind of the calculations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I would also like to go uh, for that for that option because it, the challenge we have in industrial refrigeration is the uh, the large amount of cooling uh, that we yeah. need to provide. And if you consider that, I think it's a uh, it gives a better perspective if you actually look how how much uh, refrigerant do you have per uh, per kilowatt of cooling. I think that's a, mm -hmm. a better way to look at it, and and that's 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 also why we have the the challenge with ammonia. But you could say, have we used any other refrigerant uh, with the amounts that we are having? Uh, it would also be a challenge, just in a different way. I mean, if you had a HFC in this amount or or R22. So I think that therefore I see the 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 low the low charge or the charge reduction as a as a very good option uh, moving forward. Okay, thank you, Christian. Actually, this links up to the next the next question, um, and it's uh, more from the business opportunity of uh, low charge technology. Um, do you believe um, in your position as industrial uh, you know VP for uh, VP for industrial refrigeration in Danfoss? Do you believe there are opportunities to replace uh, or to opt, apply this technology in systems that have traditionally not used ammonia in the past? Uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, it goes both ways when we say that the, the border between uh, uh, commercial and industrial is, is moving. So it also go in, uh, in the other direction. Uh, but so, so I see this mainly when, when going in uh, replacing uh, old, old plants uh, using uh, R22 or HFCs. I definitely think mm -hmm. that if you can go in with this, that that would be an opportunity. And then I see it in, in refurbishment of the existing systems, because we have a large uh, ammonia facilities today who, who used to be on the countryside, but due to the urbanization and so on, we now find 25 years later that they are uh, in the middle of populated areas. So there is also a need to, to do some things there if we want to maintain the plant in, in that location. 
So, so that's the main option I see that to actually change it. Then there are some some areas that you can say uh, ammonia chillers and and smaller, uh, more on the commercial side where you see some some ammonia moving in also. But on the industrial side, I see mainly replacement of, of old refrigerants and then to reduce the charge in existing ammonia plants for safety, safety purposes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're running out of time, so we'll conclude with the last question. And uh, it's related to training. And of course, uh, it points that uh, regardless of the amount of refrigerant, uh, safety awareness and emergency response training are, of course, important for the end user. Uh, how is this taken into consideration? What are the measures proposed to this to this end? Maybe uh, I, I believe this is relevant for both uh, <laughs> both of you, well, all of you of you actually. Yes, let me quick tra translate to Chang Chang. Chang 其实我们往期的那些事故可以说是安的事故嗯之所以是事故是因为它没有执行标准嗯标准其实好多专家也进行了很多很多次的检查发现标准是合适的嗯然后怎么解决这个问题呢我们的我们的想法是把我们的这个
mobile units. I'm not sure if it already exists. <laughs> Perhaps he already has something similar. Uh, where you have some uh, mobile facility that you go to locations and, and uh, facilitate this training. Yeah, no, it's a good, good question. We and we have uh, it, it's something also that we have considered. There is there is the the challenge to move around ammonia. Uh, <laughs> that is a bit more challenging to move around uh, uh, CO two and so on. But but that could uh, that definitely an option. We also we have a full blown uh, training facility in India. And we're also looking to to add more training facilities uh, for ammonia system. And and one one thing could be to do the mobile. Another one could be to do them in conjunction with some of the CO2 training centers that we have to also mm -hmm. be sure that we can train this uh, uh, new, you could say, hybrid, where we have uh, cascade systems uh, and, and different types of system involving both uh, ammonia and CO2. But it, it's uh, it's a good point, and it's definitely uh, an area that we need to to continue to pay attention to because it is uh, one of our biggest challenges actually to to have enough uh, uh, trained people uh, in uh, in the industry. Okay, thank you very much. I see a couple more questions, but we're running out of time. So perhaps if we can have a very simple uh, reply to just one last question, and the other would have to be in written. Um, it's about the um, the option to use. Um, well, direct expansion systems instead of flooded system to reduce the charge. Is it something that would be possible that is, is considered as an option to reduce the charge? Yeah,可以降低这个重量。这个重量是不是一个好的方式? Uh, 我们认为这个直棚系统其实重力工业。嗯。好的。在降低充入量的时候，不应该以牺牲系统的性能，还有换热器的性能为代价。嗯。谢谢。嗯。OK。OK. Okay. Okay, the answer from Chengcheng is a uh, resident of Yantai Mo is that uh, is uh, the DF system is uh, yes, it could reduce the charge, but on the other side, it also will sacrifice the, the the efficiency of the system. So we should uh, consider this in the uh, overview picture. So it's uh, if we uh, it's uh, considered about the overview uh, efficiency of the system. Maybe the pump system is the best uh, solution. So we should consider in an overview way. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I apologize for the last question we, we did not manage to cover. It's a, it's a very general question and would require a long explanation. So perhaps this is something that we can come back in written about the cooperation between African partners uh, and China, in, especially in promotion of training. Um, I think this is a topic that could merit another webinar in itself, um, but perhaps there is a, well, the, uh, some elements that we can offer already in, in written. Uh, so I would like to thank you once again to all our speakers and, and all our audience for today's webinar. And you will, of course, have a, a summary of the webinar and that report that you would see on the website of uh, amunia21.com and, of course, on the uh, website of Shekope's webinars, together with the file of the video of the webinar that you can consult at any time. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope to meet you next in a future edition of a Shekong-based webinar. Bye-bye.